share the love with South Africa's most loved dog food, Bobtail, for strong South African dogs. So this morning's topic of discussion is all about heart health when it comes to your dogs. And we have Dr. Roy in studio. Dr. Roy, always nice to have you. Thank Love you. Love the bandana, man. <laughs> Same colour as Bob. Same colour as Bob. It's motorbike outside, you know. <laughs> I arrived here on my Harley. <laughs> Stop the sweat from there getting into my eyes. Cool. So we're talking about heart health. And I think let's start right at the top. For, for dog owners, pet owners, is there any way of telling that your pet might be suffering from some sorts of heart condition? Yeah, yeah it's a great question. You and there very, very clear indications. One of the first things that the owner is going to see is that the dog has what we call decreased exercise tolerance. They simply don't walk as far as they used to. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes think, oh, my dog's getting old. Maybe it's just old age. If your dog doesn't do what it used to do, mm -hmm. consider heart failure. Mm -hmm. The, the second thing that the owners see is that uh, we often get people coming into the practice and they say, my dog's got something stuck in its throat. It's kind of hawking and, you know, it's, it kind see. of tries to cough up its tonsils effectively. Fluid on the chest, uh, that's another classic sign of heart failure. So decreased exercise tolerance, um, mm. fluid on the chest and, and, and coughing. And the mm. coughing is very often morning coughing and evening coughing. Mm. When the dog is lying quietly, mm. fluid will pool on the chest and, and then the dogs cough. I see. I and, see. and it goes all the way through, unfortunately, yeah. to what we call end-stage heart failure, where there's fluid on the chest, and then there's also a pendulous abdomen. And if you, sure. if you pat the abdomen, you actually get almost a fluid wave. So, yeah. And just off the top of your head, are there any breeds that's more common to heart conditions that you would say that people just yeah. be well, aware of? Yeah, there are. You know, there's been a classic uh, heart failure uh, describing what we call Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Okay. No, so, but yeah. uh, there are certainly certain breeds are more predisposed. All right, yeah. cool. But best thing is, you know, if you see anything, get it checked by your vets. Now, Absolutely. let's talk about some of those heart conditions that, that you can expect to find. Well, well, you know, you, you, we've got, I've got a heart here, which is quite interesting, because you have, what, we, what we're going to talk about mainly is what is called congestive heart failure. Is this the more common one? Yeah, that's the one that you will really, you will, you'll be alerted to by these signs. The heart is divided into two sides, okay. and each side has a top and a bottom chamber, and they are separated by valves. It's good to also remember, it's just like a human heart. Very Absolutely, close to, yeah. yeah. The mammalian heart is built on the same yeah. fashion, no matter what species, whether it's an elephant or a whale yeah. or a mouse, it all has the same, same functioning heart. heart. Exactly. Yeah, and they actually all suffer from the same sort of diseases. So we're talking about the failure of the valve. Blood flows into the heart from top to bottom chamber, then it gets pumped out. Mm -hmm. And when these valves fail, what happens is the flow of blood, instead of going from top to bottom, the heart pumps and there's, uh, some of it goes in the right way and some of it unfortunately goes the wrong way, through see. the valves the wrong way, and you get a very characteristic like, psh, it, it, it whooshes the, the wrong way. Uh. And you can hear this quite clearly. And when it's advanced, you can actually feel, if you really? hold your heart's chest, you can feel that, that thrill as the blood goes through. And then there's, of course, when, when the heart starts failing, it starts beating faster as well. Wow. So you have a normal um, yeah. range of heart mm. beats. And then if, for instance, a small dog like Bob were to have a pulse rate in excess of 200, That's wrong, I would yeah. be very, very suspicious. If a big dog like a German Shepherd had to have a pulse rate of 180, yeah. I'd be very worried. Wow. And Dr. cats, 240, 250, 40. you've got a big problem. All right, so feel the heart rate, of course, <coughs> when they are rested. Mm. We have a caller on the line. Lynn, good morning. Hello there. Um, I was told that uh, my dog's uh, fangs, when they have got that browning colour, um, that, that, that helps towards heart disease or something to do with the heart. Cool. Lynn, could you do me a favour and just repeat your question for Dr. Roy? Whether the sound just didn't come through quite cl as clear. The, the dog's teeth, yeah. when they are discoloured. Yes. Okay, okay, I got it. The dog's teeth, yep. when they're discoloured, can that be an indication of a heart condition? No, it can't. Uh, w when the dog's teeth are discoloured, that is usually dental tartar. But left unattended, you know, when the teeth, the, the, your mouth is the entrance to, your mouth is the entrance to your, your lungs and to your stomach, and if air going through your mouth, if the teeth are discolored, there may very well be dental disease, and you certainly can get bacteria in your mouth, which unfortunately can cause or exacerbate a heart problem. So you may get, you may have heart failure with concomitant infection, 
and that can certainly exacerbate the problem. So, so you go to the vet for, for this, uh, you know, the brown to be removed? Yes, you should go and have the tartar removed, but that's not a sign of heart failure. Dental tartar and brown on your dog's teeth is a sign of dental disease and what we call gingivitis. It's not yeah. a sign of heart failure, but it can sometimes exacerbate the problem. It's certainly okay. not a clinical sign I would look for. All right. Thank you, Lynn, for your call. Thanks. So get Thank your you. puppy's teeth sparkling white. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, Dr. Roy, to get back on the topic, uh, you know, heart conditions for your pet. So once you've established that your, your dog has got a heart condition, what are some of the things that you can do? Well, this is something that unfortunately is a veterinary province. I say unfortunately because it's unfortunate that your pet has the problem in the first place. Yeah. And uh, you simply don't have the wherewithal to treat the problem. You, your function as a pet owner is to recognize the problem. And then I always say, get thee to a vet. Well, this is the time you need to get to a vet. Get thee to a vet and on time. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> and there are certain, you know, the vet will do a proper clinical evaluation. Mm. Listen to the chest and hear the murmur. Look at the, what we call the capillary refill time. Look at the mucous membranes, the gums. Make a diagnosis. Make a tentative diagnosis. And then there are procedures. Look, th there are some very obvious cases where a clinical examination will fulfill the requirements and the diagnosis can be made. But there are some procedures that a lot of us like to do, a good quality clinical examination. ECG or electrocardiogram is an older technique and it's to a point being supplanted by ultrasound, but it still is of value. Mm. Once again, x-rays as well. You know, ultrasound, cardiac ultrasound is a difficult discipline uh, yeah. That is really, uh, it's yeah. as good as the operator. So in private practice, certainly ECG and chest x-ray are tools that we can use along with All a good right. clinical examination. So there's, there's things you can do. <clears throat> Just sorry yeah. to interrupt you there. We have one more caller on the line. Corby from Durban. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Morning. Well, yourself. What is your question for Dr. Roy this morning? Wonderful. I just want to say morning to the doctor. Morning, How morning. are you doing this morning, doctor? Hi, good morning, Hi. morning. Yes. yes um, basically, I just want to ask the doctor. I have a toy pump at home. Um, yes, I have a toy pump at home, doctor. Yes. And basically, at night, she actually has this, I would say it's called a fit, okay? Um, it says, like, she has, like, a shiver, and I actually roll up. Does that, that, does that have any effect on the heart? Okay. You know, a toy pom, the minute you talk to me about a toy pom and what you've described, th there is a condition in a toy pom called a collapsing trachea, where the windpipe is a little bit smaller than it should be, and the airways are restricted, and she may not be getting enough breath, she may not be getting enough air, and that certainly uh, would be a cause to, uh, be, to be concerned. So my instructions, once again, would be to get to a vet, have the vet examine the heart, see if the, the so-called fit has anything to do with heart failure or has anything to do with this collapsing windpipe. But unfortunately, once again, a veterinary problem. Oh, yes, I do fully understand what you're saying, yes. Thank you, Corvin. Thank, Thank you. you a lot. Dr. Roy, that's what we have time for this morning. Thank you very much. But I think Thank the you, lesson Roy. here is, you know, get your dog checked <clears throat> regularly. Absolutely. Especially for heart yep. conditions because you want to act on it as soon as possible. Great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Dr. Roy Liesel. So